Well, we hope that you did enjoy that bite of Johnny's own editorial from the studios of 92.7. As always, you can get the latest update. You just have to get onto social media, especially on Facebook, as well as the relevant platforms, and get the latest as they stream live from their studios, 3FM, Urban Style Radio. And I particularly always look forward to what they do in the 3FM bus each morning, soliciting views as they pick passengers, ordinary Ghanaians, on various routes across the capital and ask them very pertinent issues. As always, we're encouraging you, you can cash out, goes with a short code, star 439 hash. And most importantly, as you do that, please know that you can always uh, choose option two. You increase the number of tickets you have. And as always, please make sure that you increase those numbers. And when we do the draws, then you can also be one of the lucky winners. And I always encourage you, we're building up to that mega jackpot on Friday. Over the last four weeks, giving 50,000 Ghana cities, 10,000 Ghana cities each to our multiple winners. And um, they all come from various facets or parts of the country and they get to be lucky winners on the day. Once you persevere, certainly you get to win. Good morning to all of you who are watching us. But uh, let me say good morning to those who have joined us also on the stream. It's always a delight to have you. And so I see a number of you as well. Manini Mani, good morning to you. And then also those who have joined us from uh, the various part also, good morning to you as well. Uh, Patrick, uh, Nelson Akotia, good morning. Uh, Kingsley Ofori, and then also K. Bless, uh, Kingston Asimega, and then Ibrahim as well. Please make sure that uh, you share the stream. Let me just introduce um, our guest this morning because we're here to, uh, a day after to look at that Supreme Court ruling, 5-2 uh, majority decision as it is, declaring what the Speaker announced in the Chamber of Parliament as unconstitutional. And so it means that, you know, if you cannot make any declaration, so where else do you have to contest that? I guess they'll say that it's the high court. But we have to look at those matters in perspective. And so I'll introduce my guest this morning. Ishak Ibrahim is a lawyer, British trained, and then also law lecturer as well with the UPSC Law School. And then also one of the key uh, members of the DMB it is possible 2024 team, Ishaq Ibrahim. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, good morning to you. Full regalia. And good morning to my friends here. That's and good so morning right. to fellow countrymen and women. Nice, nice. Good morning. Yeah. I, I love your. You look. It really looks like a baseball cap. Thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's one, yeah, number one. Yes, number one. All right. Yes. And then also, Philip Light, also. Uh, a, a law lecturer and then legal practitioner as well. So, Philip La, good morning Philemon. to you. How Philemon. are you? Philemon La. Yes, Philemon okay. La. Yeah. Pleased to be here. Okay, Good nice. morning. Very cool compose as well. Dr. Jonathan Asantiotri is a political analyst lecturer with the University of Cape Coast. He's a regular across uh, the platform, TV3, as well as 3FM, and many of our subsidiaries as well. He's also a regular contributor to discussions on TV3 New Day, Big Issues. And uh, Dr. Jonathan Asantiotri, good morning to you. Good morning, Roland. Great. And <coughs> great to, to the have colleagues you. in the studio. Great, great, great. And then also, a man I've come to love. I always, as why wasn't he communicating for the MPP when uh, he was in, in the MPP? But he, he decided to desert them. And so, you know, that clause or article they had in their constitution affected him. So he was dismissed from the party. Or maybe he left. Solomon Usu. <laughs> It's my new old kid on the block. <laughs> Solomon, how are you? I'm doing well, Roland. Fantastic. Uh, man. Lali say I'm a butter fan. <clears throat> You're a butter fan. Butter yeah. fan. And you are a businessman as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. How much is the dollar now? It's 17. 17. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, 17. That's hard for business. There is no business. They have collapsed everything. And, and I wonder why the vice president still goes around telling people. That, how long was the trade minister? Uh, we, uh, things are going well when, in fact, he knows that uh, he has collapsed everything uh, and on the basis of that alone the Ghanaian must not even listen to what the vice president is telling everyone because he does not stay true to any promises that he gives the people of this country uh, he scammed the current president into believing that given the opportunity as the vice president the head of the economic management team he could lead in the redemption of the Ghanaian economy not knowing 
it was nothing about that, but he was into IT, as he's now letting the whole world understand. What do you mean by he was into IT? I, information technology, that's what he tells us. Now everything up, up, develop an app that will deal with the city, no issue, and everyone will be okay. He's unable to do that. Develop an app that will deal with Galamse, no issue, we'll be happy. He's not developing app to deal with the issues confronting the country. Apps that are not necessary is what he sells to the people of this country. So, really, the time has come for us to show him the exit and restore Alan Chamantin into a comfortable way. I will address your issue regarding Mr. Alan Chamantin being a trading and industry minister because you know very well that when it comes to the management of an economy, we have the fiscal space and we have the monetary space. Ask yourself which of these positions Mr. Alan was holding. Did he not give it Africa continental free trade? So he said the, 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 the dollar CD... A17, this is... The Bank of Ghana says 1634. No, 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 I mean from the Forest Bureau, it's even 17.2. Okay. Yeah, but if you make the mistake of going to the black market around the Tudu and the, the Vodafone area, that one is 19 cities. Even you, that one, you won't get it. You're a businessman, so no. I believe you. No, no, now the economy is gone. There is no economy. It's gone. So it's not, you are not doing propaganda. <laughs> I, I, not that mothers are selling newly born babies at 300 cities. Do you need me to tell you anything again? How was it? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ishak. Yes. Yesterday. Yes. Uh, of course, you're on television and then the breaking news came, etc. Yes, yes. um, uh, what does it mean? Okay, yes. What it simple means is that, uh, as we have always argued, the Supreme Court has been given the power under Article 2 that when we disagree and then we call upon them, they need to step in. And when they determine and make orders, those orders are final. So, and it's not just Ghana, as I've always argued. Um, if you look at the international community, um, and there are more than 180 countries that are party to the International Court of Justice. Article 38 provides sources of law uh, where the court will use to adjudicate issues. Among them, uh, 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 what they call it, uh, Article 8, Subsection S, Clause 3. It says, general principles of law recognized by civilized countries. And in particular, it listed three things over there. So the principle of Pacta Sustavanda, Extopel, and that of Res Judicata. So residue capital means that whenever there are disputes, there's always somebody who has been given the authority to have the final say. And when they have the final say, regardless of whether you agree with it or not, we need to move on because we have other important matters that we need to do it. So the Supreme Court had a final say yesterday. And the final say simply means that we don't have options. Because Article 2 is very clear. If an order is made after the termination of a matter, you need to carry it out. And if you refuse to do that, you are committing a high crime. And then high crime, there is also a penalty prescribed under Article 2. That if you are the president or the vice president, you refuse to comply with the order, then you are liable for removal. So that's a political, I mean, a political penalty over there. But in the, in the case of the speaker, or citizens such as myself and you, you will be liable to imprisonment without an option of a fine for up to 10 years, as well as a disqualification clause over there. And now after the imprisonment, you'll be disqualified from holding a public office for up to 10 years again. So almost 20 years. So this is a serious issue. And it wasn't MPP or any other person who prescribed it there. Ghanaians, over 75% of Ghanaians, agreed that we needed over there because we want the constitution to work. Now, I don't want to go back to the case, but we have, I have always <coughs> predicted, myself and other people have always predicted that this is the right interpretation. The speaker did not, doesn't have those powers. If you look at Article 99, it's very clear. It talks about determining the uh, determination of membership by parliament. And that if there's any question over there, it is for the high court to make that decision and not any other person. But others, as, we have, uh, as they have argued that 
Article 110 has given Speaker uh, some power because it allows Parliament to make its own standing orders. And when you look at the current standing order, I think Article 19, it said the Speaker may pronounce vacancy in Parliament. In or standing order 19. Yes, yeah, standing order 19. But as we say, the standing order, that power that he draws to make the standing, the Parliament draws to make the standing order, is on Article 110. It talks about procedure. So that is a general power. But if you come to Article 99, it is very specific. And as lawyers know, some people might say there is a gap in the law, but there's no gap. If you study jurisprudence, when you see something of this nature, we fill it with what? Principles. There are constitutional principles that can be used to uh, fill something that looks like an apparent gap, but it's not. And as you remember, Dr. S.K.B. Asante, who were one of those people who had the privilege of drafting it, he's a very experienced lawyer. He's trained at Nottingham University and uh, what did they what call it? Uh, Yale University. What I'm trying to say is that they would have been much more aware about these principles as lawyers, that they know that we use these principles to always try to fill this gap. And the principles is that if there's a general power given to somebody and there's a specific power given to somebody, the specific power takes precedence, not the general power. <clears throat> somebody might also argue that the standing orders are very specific. That is the speaker who does it. But the standing order is an inferior law as compared to the constitutional provision is Article 99. So if a standing order, which is an inferior law, is then called into, into comparison with a specific provision of the constitution the constitution being the superior law would prevail over a standing order of of parliament so here the, the, this, there's no doubt at all some people ask this absurd question that what well, so does that mean that do we have to go to the high court if somebody dies hello why are we this is absurdity at the highest level. If you die, the thing speaks for itself. Do you understand that? If you die, the thing speaks for itself. So, Mr. Ishak, so this absurdity in, shouldn't in come the, in at all. Within the current status yes. quo yes. and following this ruling, making the deductions, yes. what then should subsequently be any action if somebody wants to take at all on this yes the high cases. court the high court should always be and this is not the first time if you look at the cases of zakaria the first part of article 99 have always been implemented zakaria and co went to uh, the high court and even the court of appeal had uh, opportunity i mean the, the supreme court had the opportunity to actually deal with article 99 already when they said the highest level of court you can appeal to was a court of appeal so Article 99 has been litigated on already. So, so, so Mr. Ishak, um, yes. I think that now it's been made clear that yes. the Professor Aaron Michael Quay's ruling was wrong. Was wrong. Yes. At the time, There's no doubt at the about time it. by principle within the MPP, there yes. were no Yale lawyers and all those people there. No, I didn't I didn't mention the Yale lawyer of MPP. I was just talking about the draft, the one of the drafted of the constitution, Professor uh, SKB. I, I understand that. Okay. So what I'm saying, you see, the trouble about let's it wasn't MPP that that should have. Let me ju let me just yes. surprise you. Yeah, okay. Let's go back. He says, with yes. all intents and purposes, yes, he's no longer a member of the party. Yes, you're a member of the MPP, aren't you? I am. A I member. mean, logically, yes. because you are well clothed in there. I'm, also, I'm actually he has a member. pronounced himself publicly as an independent, yes. and subsequently has filed his papers to compete against the party. Yes, in his official candidates as an independent. Yes, on seventh. December 2020. Yes. Subsequently, he continues to say, having forfeited yes. the membership of the party yes. on whose ticket he was elected to yes. Parliament, yes. the operative language of the Constitution yes. is that he shall, which is mandatory, yes. vacate his seat in yes. Parliament. Yes. And he's talking about a member in yes. a current Parliament. Yes. That's a, the seventh Parliament. Yes. So, and, I, I, and, and so, from my understanding yesterday, the Supreme Court had not even gone to an interpretation of it. They just look at the question of who has but the right the to reasoning. decide. Okay. Who has the right to decide? So perhaps they, they might they may still need to go further and settle it. Either the high court would then have the opportunity to look at it, assuming somebody brings a case. But as I said, Professor Mike Quay was wrong. 
whatever interpretation he placed on it it is not it wasn't his job it's irrelevant to do that today it, yes it wasn't his job his job is that if a decision is not yours to be made regardless of what you have said if you are wrong you are wrong so i believe professor mike shouldn't have made a decision the current speaker who was under constructive notice that there was an issue should have taken his time but if you look at it he was playing politics from the very beginning <laughs> He has left his impartial uh, position as a speaker and was and was on I the side understand. of that the That's what the NDC. Supreme Court said. I thought you said that's no my interpretation. That. Say, Shaq, just hold on to that. that. Yes. yes. So that we don't bring the politics aspect okay. of the work okay. that the speaker yes. does, okay. because the speaker is a okay. is a political person. So it's a politi no matter how we want to. And and, and Philemon, it's very critical that um, now that the Supreme Court has ruled, perhaps the question should be, then everybody should just shun whatever concerns they have or commentary they would want to have and particularly since you are clothed as a lawyer any misgivings on the ruling of the supreme court or the judgment very well brother good morning good morning to the people of this country and uh, there's a message of hope and that message is the fact that president Mahama is coming to fix this country reset this country in every facet of, of of this country's life there will be a reset including manifestly uh, ensuring that justice is done president Mahama is committed to that President Mahama is committed to ensuring that the economy helps the people of this country to thrive. The situation where people in this country cannot feed, the situation where the exchange rate is an un un unprecedented high, will not be the case under President Mahama's government. And of course, on the issue of corruption, President Mahama will not give a $34 million contract to his children. He will not do that. Unlike the case where President Akufado is additional contracts to his family and friends, it will not happen. So I, I think I, it's important for me I to ask you a specific that. question. I'm going on that now. On the issue of the Supreme Court, I think that what we have seen so far is that this MPP government has continuously demonstrated that they have no principle. I would refer my brother, my learned brother from the MPP, to Article 9 of the MPP Constitution, which is clear that any member of the MPP who, who supports a candidate outside the selected member of the MPP is automatically... Why is this important? We're told in law that the constitu train, Constitution train is supreme. Train. No doubt, no doubt. The Constitution of Ghana is supreme relative to issues of Ghana. Now, every association, political party, corporate entity can also have its own constitution. And to the extent that the provisions of those constitu uh, do that constitution is not in contravention to the constitution, it's valid. So whatever is in the MPP constitution does not in any way conflict with the constitution of Ghana. That means it's valid law. So if the MPP constitution is saying that anybody that supports a candidate that is not sponsored by the MPP automatically forfeits membership of the party, why are they today pontificating before the Supreme Court? My brother here used to be in the MPP. They say because he has now supported movement for change and is supporting Alan against a sponsored part candidate of the MPP, he has automatically lost his membership of the MPP. Solomon Ousu, who is here in this studio, has automatically lost his membership of the MPP because he has supported somebody else. Why is the MPP being hypocritical now that members of their party, certain members of parliament, have defected what do you mean hypocritical? It is hypocritical. Yeah. It Hypo is. Because on one principle, you are what, then they are being unfair to Solomon. The MPP deserves, Solomon deserves an apology from the MPP. Boniface Abu Bakar Sadiq deserves an apology from the MPP. Nana Henning too deserves an apology from the MPP. Kare Nobi deserves an apology from the MPP. Because they automatically forfeited their membership by virtue of supporting Alan. So the MPP has no principle. That's the point. The people of the Ghana who are watching this morning, I reiterate to you, never trust any politician, any government that has no principle. This MPP government have proven to us they care nothing. They've thrown principles to the dogs. And that's why they are leading this country with reckless abandon. If they had principle, they would have stuck to the core provision of their party. They would have stuck. They would have, look, it wouldn't be the case that two legs good, four legs bad. They wouldn't have done that. It wouldn't have been the case where you... You, you, you punish Solomon Ousu. Meanwhile, when it comes to the case of the Formina MP, it comes to Cynthia Mamle Morrison, you are being selective. They are failed. An important point I should talk about, my brother. Parliament works through collaboration. M meaning in what? previous times, various leader, when we had leaders in Parliament, when we had Harun Edusu, when we had Osei Chimensa Bonsu, of course, Atoforsen also doing very well. 
when we did not have the likes of Afenyo Marken leading party. No, you cannot make those disparaging. This is the point. This is the point. Maybe, it's it's not oh, oh, it is not. Honestly. It is not. Honestly. It is not. Honestly. This is the point I'm making. Turn your language. If I thought you made the point here, the fact of the matter is that when we had credible leaders in parliament leading the house, Afenyo Marken oh, cannot, Afenyo Marken cannot bring the house together. He is not a rallying leader. He's not a leader that can bring different shades of opinion together. Philemon, are you he saying that he the going the route that he has is rather on... Dividing parliament. Politically. Afenyo Markin is very political. Politically. Afenyo Markin does not have the quality to bring parliament together. He calls himself. You mean he, he could have resolved this better than the Afenyo way he... Martin, he could have been better. If you bring an SRC president of KNUST <coughs> into the position of Afenyo Markin, he'll do a better job than Afenyo No, Markin. no, no. You cannot I say I tell that. you that. Please. I tell you that. The person is not it's here, so let's not make this right. You're a legal practitioner. Yes, it is. Please. It is. And Afenyo Markin deserves the right to take legal action if what I'm saying is a lie. I believe that take an SRC president from KNUSC to lead the MPP caucus, and that person will do a better job than Afenyo Markin. He has failed in rallying the MPP together. He has failed in performing his responsibilities as a leader. I would have expected that he would consult. Did he speak to Osei Chemen Sabozo at all? Did he speak to him? Did he, did he take his hand over no seriously? If he did, he would have realized that parliament works through consensus. This brings me to the issue of the political question doctrine. The law is right that political issues must be dealt with in a political sense and not legally. How that is this is a political poli issue? It is, it is, it is. Because you see parliament, as you said, parliament <laughs> is the master of its own rules. Nope. It, it doesn't is. apply for it. It is. It. Parliament is a master of its own rules. No one you steal powers from elsewhere. I thought I listened to you in silence okay. when you were speaking. Okay. I did. So, okay. Parliament is a master of its own rules. <laughs> and therefore, it's important, it's important that Parliament is allowed to operate within the core function of its responsibilities. Now you have come to introduce okay. the Supreme Court. And you see, the Supreme Court should be worried. Roland, you should be worried. All of us on this table should be worried. Because when you monitor the mood of this country, measure the pulse of this country, people are disappointed at the Supreme Court. We are aware of the recent Mo Ibrahim report. Look at social media. Everyone calls the Supreme Court by a certain name, a certain disparaging name, which I do not want to repeat. But it tells you that the people of this country have a certain perception of the Supreme Court. And I think they have a responsibility to ensure that that image is purged of the minds of the Ghanaian people. Otherwise, I mean, we are seemingly losing the credibility that we would have wanted the Supreme Court to have. But the Supreme Court is supreme. It is supreme. Per the 1992 constitution. <laughs> no doubt about that. The Supreme Court is supreme. But the fact of the matter is that do the people of this country trust that the Supreme Court is being fair in its adjudication? So the political question doctrine is that let politics be politics and let the legal issue stand. Now, the MPP may claim that they've got a ferric victory. Ferric victory. I can assure you that the MPP is the biggest loser in all of this. Afenyo Markin is the biggest loser in all of this. Alaji Baumia is the biggest loser in all of this. Meaning what? what do they stand to benefit out of what the Supreme Court has said? What do they stand to benefit? What do they stand to benefit? Even they who have not been able to rally their members around to come to parliament. Even they who have members of parliament all around the various constituencies who are scared of defeat. They will not even come to parliament. They will not. Because they are all suffering under the weight of the failure of the Akufuado government. Of Baumia's government. People are there fighting for their seats. It's not the time for them to come and continue to sponsor loans that this MPP government is going to spend recklessly. The people of this country should be rest assured that under a President Mahama government, credibility will be reintroduced into governance. Under President Mahama's government, principle will stand tall over parochial partisan <coughs> interests like the MPP is doing. That is our commitment. So, no. that, that, um. that, 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 uh, for example, Mani Nimani says, so Roland, if the Speaker calls back Parliament and NDC MPs also decide not to mass up their numbers on the side, how can decisions then be taken, knowing that they didn't negotiate with them, etc.? I mean, that is another leg to this whole thing. Supreme Court. Should that be a concern? Uh, it should be a concern, yeah, especially if you are not building consensus. Parliament work or parliamentary work works more harmoniously in a consensus environment. You don't uh, tell the Supreme Court cannot order Parliament to behave in a certain way. Yes, I believe that the Speaker has to obey the, the orders of the court. But at the end, the, in terms of how Parliament itself will behave going forward. That one cannot be regulated by the Supreme Court. So what would you have achieved? But I see, Roland, it still come back. I listened to the argument put forward by uh, Godfrey Dame. And then as for Jogati, there was not no much from him. Anytime he, he got up to speak, they asked him to uh, sit down and something of that sort. But if their argument is anything to go by, then we have a serious problem ahead of us. But let me say the decision of this Supreme Court advantages Mr. Lanchamante. And we are so happy. 
is so a, a victory for Mr. Alagemate's presidency. How does And it? let me tell you, if this decision had come earlier, we would have had a lot of MPP, MPs who would boldly be coming out supporting Mr. Alagemate. Because you, <laughs> why were they afraid to support Mr. Alagemate's uh, independent candidate? The fear of their seats being declared vacant. Now, that is why a lot they told of you that. They told, uh, they told us in confidence we have more than half of the MPs of the, uh, of the new patriotic side supporting Mr. Alan Chamati secretly. But for the fear of their seat being declared vacant, that is why they are siding with the MPP side. We call them butterfant, butterfly elephant. That is what they are. They are there silently working for us. And so, why can't we be happy? One of the arguments that have been put forward, especially by our, people, our friends from the MPP, is that when Mr. Alajanate becomes the president, he will not have MPs to appoint as ministers of state. Is that not the case? And so, with this decision, all that my beautiful MPs from the MPP side and the ND side would do is that when Mr. Alajanate becomes president and appoints you or nominates you as a minister, you just cross carpet and say you are going as an independent candidate. Nobody in that parliament can declare your seat vacant. You remain a minister to the lifetime of this parliament. Is it not beautiful for Mr. Lanchamante? But what would we have done to ourselves? Would this decision stand the test of time? Ask yourself. Because this same MPP, Godfrey Dami in 2020, was a member of the MPP. Is it not the case? He was the deputy attorney general. Now, the decision to declare that seat vacant emanated from the new patriotic party. The general secretary of that party, John Boedu, was the one that sent the petition to parliament. And by so the means, he had consulted everyone that mattered, including all the lawyers that he was talking about. The Yaleans, the Oxfordians, the, the Nottinghamians, uh, where, how, what have you? Where you went to school? The Cambridge. The Cambridge. Yeah. They were all there. <laughs> and they wrote beautifully to the Speaker of Parliament, Aaron Michael Quinn. Mind you, he is also a Reverend Minister and a professor who understands the constitution <laughs> of the land clearly. And by so doing, they declared this uh, 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 formula seat vacant. What are we being told now? The same people, <clears throat> they are saying, no, we add. So, first of all, before you even moved to the Supreme Court, you should have apologized to the people of this country. Mm -hmm. There is no apology. And you want us to take you serious? Well, they say this is law. Which one is law? So the law works yesterday, and when they feel that, oh, it suits us today, let's go and change it. How can we behave in this country <laughs> like that? Look, just last, last year, on the 20th of November, 2023, listen to the General Secretary of the MBP speaking. He wrote an official press release, and with your permission, I read. This is November 2023. Forfeiture of membership pursuant to the provision of Article 391 of the New Patriotic Party Constitution. The leadership of the new patriotic party has taken notice of recent activities of Hosin Adoye, Yabu Abiyan Samuan, Nana Hininto, and Boniface Abubakar Sadiq, which includes publicly uh, endorsing the candidate of a person other than the, the, the duly elected presidential candidate of the party, His Excellency, I won't mention the name for, uh, 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 to, to give him free advert. In spite of their flagrant breach of the party's Constitution, particular Article 35A4 and 391, the aforementioned name uh, men still hold themselves out as members of the MPP. For the avoidance of doubt, Article 35A4 of the MPP Constitution enjoins all members of the party to abide by and publicly uphold the decision of the party. In addition, Article 391 of the Constitution provides as follows A member of the party who stands as an independent candidate against the officially elected member of the party or who joins or declares his or her support for another political party or for an independent candidate when the party has sponsored a candidate in a general or by election automatically is it the same letter that even affected the tsunami hit all of you oh it hit me as i'm sister innocent man <laughs> they decided in spite of my investment in this party from 1992 with a stroke of pen justin kodia i was in this party before him he quickly see the way he signed took me out of the party. And I embraced it. But this is law. Wholehearted. A law. A law is speaking. Now the same people, in spite of this, goes to the Supreme Court and say, this law is void. Have you heard anyone going to the Supreme Court to say that to the extent of this provision, the MPP's 39 is, is null and void? It's not consistent with the provisions in the Constitution? 
We are not being told that that's why the last time this matter was discussed, I told you that the new patriotic party do not respect anybody in this country. Yeah. How? How can you say that? This is a total... They don't respect anybody. They don't respect you. Look, take it from me. They do it as and when. They feel that they control the judiciary of the state and that whatever they want to happen is what will happen. Either than that, just four years ago, with the same lawyers, with their beautiful argument, with their argument, told us that this was the position. Now they go back and tell us. We don't even know the reason that the Supreme Court gave. All that they told us was that the it is will unconstitutional. And that the seat, the speaker did not have the, the, the power to declare those seats vacant. In spite of the fact that there is a precedent. Four years ago, that speaker Michael Quay. So all that I'm saying is that it's beautiful for Mr. Lanchamantin. We are very happy. We are now waving our white handkerchiefs and we are admonishing all the MPP MPs who have been hiding under the pretext of fear that their seat would have been declared vacant to begin to come out and show their love to Mr. Lanchamante. I can assure him that we have more than half of the MPs who willingly support us. How do you think we have survived to date? Have you Ah, that means they are with us. They are the ones leading our campaign in the various constituencies. They are doing campaigns, cat and blouse. Vote for Alan and vote for them. Because without them adding Alan to their skin, to their ticket, who is going to look at Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Baumia's face and vote for them? With this abysmal you performance. You mean in the strongholds? The strongholds. Asante region is for the movement, and the movement is Asante region. I see. Eastern region is for the movement, and movement is the Eastern region. Dr. Santiotri, you critically take a look at this. On the side of political commentary, governance, and transparency, there's the talk about the... Um, the question about what the leadership could have done to perhaps George or, or have further discussions behind the scenes, and they could have resolved this amicably. Do you think that could have been a better option? Yeah, good morning once again. Certainly, um, I have advocated for that particular stance, and uh, I felt that would have been an appropriate means because Parliament is a place of politics, and you have two extreme, you know, positions. You're talking about the NDC, you're talking about the NPP. You see, if that were not the case, when the Supreme Court ruled yesterday, you could see that officers of government are continuously harping on top of their voices that the Supreme Court has spoken. So they expect the speaker to do A, B, C, and D. They expect the colleagues in parliament to do A, B, C, and D. Why are they happening on that particular, you know, uh, position or decision of the Supreme Court? It's because they can foresee lack of compromise on the part of the other side. And if that does not work, you will see that the Supreme Court will have given a ruling. But you are going to face implementational challenges. On the Boko conflict, don't you have a Supreme Court ruling? Why is it that there is still conflict? It means that it is not everything that can legally be used to solve the problems. If you think that you are the only person who has won, everybody else has lost, you are going to face challenges. Now, having said so, I am of the view that I want to wait and find out exactly what the Supreme Court is going to say in terms of the reason. I am tempted to think that they may escape through procedural, you know, errors or they may use procedural reasoning. Other than that, whichever way you look at it, they will land on their head. Because I don't see any ambiguity in that part. Now, let us look at it from even a commonsensical perspective. Now, when I vote for you, it means I have given you my mandate. What is the mandate for? For the period that you're supposed to stay in parliament or for the period that you are supposed to remain the president. So the, the people have given you the mandate. So by implication, there is some kind of social contract mm. between the people and the elected. Now, you are supposed to see through it that you finish that contract. But if you have decided without consulting me, because I knew you were going as independent and I still voted for you because I felt I had seen something in you, that's why I voted for. So once you have won as an independent candidate, for example, 
you have a social contract with me because I've given you my mandate. So if you decide to do otherwise, by going somewhere else, I am of the view that that amounts to an abrogation of the mandate that I have given you. Which means that I don't see how you are going to represent me mm. for that mandate that I gave you within that period as somebody else other than what your nomenclature ought to be. So it, in, in, in the wisdom of the MPP, which I agree with them, is that automatic forfeiture. So even that, nobody ought to even complain. You, the person who takes that decision, you know that you have done so. So for me, as you, 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 you rightly asked, the problem is that they are going to f face some challenges. And those challenges are real. And that will not take the Supreme Court to do so. That will be a matter of parliamentary practice. Now, if the Supreme Court is suggesting to us that what the Speaker did is unconstitutional, so under what constitution or under what article was, uh, what's it called, uh, Mr. Uh, the former MP, Esiama, under what constitutional provision was he able to caucus with the MPP? If not Article 97, two. And it is, it is stated there. So there, you are saying that that one, there is no ambiguity, and you didn't need any interpretation. But now that the person's nomenclature is, 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 is changing, you are coming up with a different you know, interpretation altogether. So for me, I'm just waiting. The Supreme Court must be more worried about the Mo Ibrahim report, for example. You see, when we say Supreme Court, Supreme Court, um, they have the right to do the interpretation. And when they are done with the interpretation, who implements it? It must take somebody else to <coughs> implement it. Now, if in the process of the implementation and you face challenges, what do you do? That is why common sense negotiation. You win some, you lose some. Because this is purely politics okay. and nothing else. And the regular intervention and interference of the Supreme Court, the regular invitation to the Supreme Court to be interfering and intervening in issues of this nature will, at the end of the day, erode the confidence the ordinary Ghanaian, you know, has in the Supreme Court. So I'm just waiting. In front of you, I'm just waiting to see the fundamental principle upon which they will say that it's unconstitutional then probably that particular item in that Constitution 97.1 and 97.2 in the Constitution has all this while been unconstitutional. Okay. Because I don't see how, and under what circumstance would there be a cross carpeted? If you tell me, for example, that this is to take effect in the succeeding parliament. All right. Now, okay. finally, on the same issue. Okay. You see, let's just look at a practical absurdity. I am voted on a ticket of NDC for 2024 elections. After a year, because the mandate is still not exhausted, I decided that I want to be with the MPP. Will they tell me that I must forfeit that particular seat? Okay. In a year later, I say I'm caucusing with the NDC back. So that is where I'm looking at some implement, implementation challenges and absurdities that these things will create. At the end of the day, it means that we don't have principles. Okay. But the law, the fundamental basics of the law, is a matter of principle. If it is the fact that you guys are going to struggle with uh, government business and all those things, for which reason, you know, in reality, uh, the Supreme Court will have to sympathize with you. Well, they may find excuses in law to be oh. able to sustain that particular mm. you know, viewpoint. Other than that, for me, we are just in the arena of absurdities. Uh, Lawyer Shak, nothing has been lost, right? Uh, because within the status quo, uh, what interpretation we're giving to this outcome? Yes. They're only saying that the speaker doesn't have the power to declare seats yes. within the power that he's clothed with yes. in the chamber. Yes. So basically it means that if you want to contest somebody's 
position to still hold himself or herself as a member of parliament while taking these actions? You go to the High Court, right? Yes. I think basically that's what they said. But before I come to that, let me just give some preliminary response. You only have three minutes, sir. Uh, three minutes. Okay, I'll come to that. Uh, when you see my colleague NDC, the opening, so you just know that the first opening part, they were actually acting. All the NDC communicators have been trained that when you do opening, you stay true to your common social rules by praising uh, John Mahama and condemning uh, uh, what they call it, Bahumia before you start. So this, the first part was acting. Um, the second part, I would come to your question very quickly. Um, and then I also respond to my colleague here, who said, what is the implementation now? As I've already said, I kept mentioning to general principles of law recognized by civilized country. If we hold ourselves out as a civilized country, all that we need, just need to do is to implement it as the court says. In other words, everything has been reversed to the status quo that was there before the speaker made his ruling. That when you have the opportunity to go back to parliament, all that you need to do is the minority resume their side, majority resume their size. Yes, so here, as we said, my, Professor Mike Quay was wrong in that interpretation. Saying that the Speaker Parliament now is wrong doesn't mean we have breached any principles. You see, court is passive. You have to come to them before they will act. The Supreme Court cannot be popping their nose, finding out, do you have a case for me to resolve? Somebody will need to knock their doors. So the fact that nobody knocked their doors when Professor McQuay was made that particular ruling does not mean if you knock their doors now, they will not say they will not make that ruling. So let's get that right. Another one would be the principles aspect. I mean, you can't argue. I mean, I, I failed to see where my colleague was talking about principles. It's actually John Mahama who doesn't have principle. If you look at the electoral commission case, for example, is that a principal person? When he was a president, he said, state your case and let the electoral commission decide. He is now in opposition, and he's saying the electoral commission must subject themselves to audit, and they should follow what the NDC say. So this is actually a good example of a president who does not follow principles. So for me, and then allegation to that, if you're marking, is not a good leader. I mean, if you listen to him recently, if you, if you listen to him recently, the point that he made clear is that he has tried over the weekend to engage with the speaker. He has tried. He has used chiefs. He has made several phone calls to the speaker. The speaker would not pick his phone calls. The intermediary, the speaker was picking the intermediary phone calls. Then let us say, come and see me in the office on Monday. The whole of Monday, he spent time in speaker's office. Speaker didn't turn up uh, to his office. What do you want him to do? At the end of it all, the constitution anticipates that one day we'll have some disagreement. And that when you have the disagreement, the right for him to go is the court. It doesn't mean we cannot do political engagement. Yes, we will still do political engagement, but the speaker would need to implement this in the interest of the country. Right now, I am troubled that he is not doing so in the interest of the country. And what they are really doing is that they are providing role modeling to several citizens. Because if you are in parliament making law, expecting citizens to obey, and you are refusing to obey the provisions of the constitution and order from, from the Supreme Court, it will not surprise me one day if a litigant turned out to court and said, I refuse to obey the laws parliament has made because that very parliament is How do you draw that lawful. conclusion? If you refuse to obey constitutional provision, somebody go to the Supreme Court and you say you will not obey, you will not implement it. Who, who has said they will, they will no, not obey? No, what I'm saying is that if the are you, speaker... Are you, are you speaking fails, about a, a hypothetical... No, tool? I am talking about now that the Supreme Court has spoken, I expect the speaker and any other member of parliament to comply with it. Very well. And I'm saying that if you fail to comply with it, you are more or less telling citizens that you can always disobey the law. You are training a huge number of uh, citizens to be civil disobedience. You say you will not obey. Because if you, you will not have the moral right to tell people to obey the laws you make. When you yourself will not, is refusing to obey orders by the courts. 
So for me and I for you, look. What about I don't want to even direct. Uh, well, your response. Look, one and a half years you? ago, we were together. <laughs> Please, there's always opportunity to come back home. To come back me, I don't have problem with me. To come back to the movement. Yes, to come back home. But you are not the ready MVP, to come to the movement, but the I want to come to your is <laughs> I don't have problem with you at so all. So you come to the movement. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, 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 so now, what will be the action that, that should be taken by the MPP side of the, uh, the NDC side of the house? Okay, I, I believe an official position is here to come up, but I just have a few questions, rhetorical questions we should ask. You see, the ruling is yet to come. So we're even yet to understand the full legal basis on which the Supreme Court has said what they are saying. But think about this. In the next parliament, with an NDC majority, clear manifest majority on the NDC, then we have Afenyo Markin and his people on the minority. One year down, Afenyo Markin realizes that the MPP has become so useless. The MPP has continued on its path of the lack of principle and realizes that the NDC is a safe haven. And so he wants to come to the safe haven. Then he announces that going forward, he's going to do business with the NDC. Will the MPP keep him as a member of the MPP? Will, they, will he remember as, will he remain as a member as a member of parliament on the ticket of the MPP? Going by this, you yes. should think about that. Going by this, yes. But I mean, you can think about how absurd that would be. That amounts to a certain absurdity. So I'm really curious in understanding why the Supreme Court would take this decision. I'm really curious. I'm really curious. Can the Supreme Court tell Mr. Speaker how to conduct his responsibilities as Speaker of the par of Parliament? Can the Supreme Court do that? Mm. There's no law that would prevent the NDC majority from sitting where they are sitting. No law. As a matter of fact, the NDC majority sitting on the right side of Mr. Speaker. No law bars them from sitting there. No law. Can you, is, there, is there any law? If you know any law, you can tell me. But there's no law. So I'm wondering, well, well, will, will Afenyo Markin run to the Supreme Court again like a crybaby and tell Supreme Court that, oh, the NDC people are sitting on the right hand Afenyo, side? Why shouldn't the NDC side obey what the Supreme Court said? Ah, but because that's, is, what, is the, the NDC that's, what, that's, that's what the majority leader Afenyo Markin has been saying. Is the, has the Supreme Court ordered the NDC majority? The decision of the <coughs> court yesterday, was it directed at the NDC majority? Okay. It wasn't. So when the NDC majority sits on the right hand side of Mr. Speaker, I wonder what basis. The only opening for Afenyo Markin is to go like a crybaby before the Supreme Court again. Maybe that's what he has to do. I, but I see in all of this, I just want to situate this within the context of uh, the fact that the Parliament of Ghana has over the years worked based on consensus. Has worked on consensus. And the man who claims he's leader of the house has failed in providing leadership. He has failed monumentally in providing leadership. The NDC is committed to the well-being of the people of this country. And we have demonstrated that in several ways. The NDC is committed to holding this government to task. No minority, no opposition party in this country has held a government to task as much as this NDC has done. As much as, Afen uh, as, much as uh, uh, Atto Forsen, Harun Edrisu, all of them have done. We have held the MPP by its balls. And that's why, how can we want to reveal the manifest corruption? Scandals that this MPP government has been, has, has, has been up to. So we end by saying that the people of this country should elect people with principle. We should elect people with a track record of commitment to the betterment of the lives of the people of this country. The MPP has demonstrated that they care about no one but only their family and friends. They care about no one but enriching their pockets. They care about no one than corruption and nepotism. So, Lo, if Parliament resumes, what do you think should be the posture? Speaker, the NDC, the MPP? I mean, Speaker must go by the decision of the Supreme Court, uh, uh, rescind the decision that, or the ruling that he made, and then restore pa uh, Parliament to its original. So, in fact, Parliament had no majority nor minority. It was the same Speaker that said majority grouping. <laughs> because if you are going to interpret the Constitution once again properly, I see him doing business with the MPP side. Does it mean he has joined the MPP side? And if he has joined the MPP side, was he qualified to be the deputy speaker and that analysis? All these are matters that has to be dealt with. But you see, Roland, the country has been polarized by the decision of the Supreme Court, has been further divided, deeply divided, sharply divided. And the only way to remedy this situation is for this country to have 
an independent candidate who will be the president in 2025. You know why? Because what, whichever way you look at it, we are going to have a difficult parliament in 2025 going. You do me, I do you. I can predict safely that the NDC will have majority in parliament in 2025. Yeah. The MPP will have minority. The Ghanaian must do us the greatest honor by having an independent person as a president so that this Hula Balu, this Koka Koka thing will not surface again. It and look, we are going to have a difficult situation. Coca, Coca. Coca, Coca, the noise. The noise. The do me, I do you is going to happen. And nothing that the Supreme Court, those that are saying that we are waiting for the, the, the reasoning of the Supreme Court, in fact, the summary of their reasoning is what they gave it to you, unconstitutional. So no amount of reasoning would justify this, the situation or the posture of the Supreme Court. They have not done this country any service. They have done the greatest disservice of our time. I thought when they did that with the birth set, it was going to end the battle with this. This is worse than the birth set uh, uh, decision. And we must not encourage it. The sovereignty of this country resides in you and I. The power to adjudicate or make decisions or interpret the constitution was given to them by us. So nobody must sit anywhere and think that they are super, superheroes, saints that we cannot. As a matter of fact, question their decisions and rulings. They are as human beings as you and I. They are there by virtue of the fact that we believe all of us cannot be Supreme Court judges. And that is why they are, as it were, adjudicating on our behalf. And I strongly disagree with whatever they have done. And the ramifications of it will be felt tomorrow. Just like Michael Quay's decision. We what thought, do you think will happen? Well, the only advantage will be to Alan, that when he becomes the president, he can appoint ministers from both parties, and if any party of them, you know we have the whip system, if they decide to whip their members to their side, that hey, don't join this administration, all that they will do is that they will declare that they are, they are no more with the party, and that their seat can never be declared as vacant, so that is the advantage to Alan. Apart from that, if you miss this opportunity, and make any of them the president, I tell you, this country will be ungovernable uh, beyond, and that is why the Supreme Court we we'll see what they did to this country. Posterity is watching all of us. It's watching all of us. I'm not happy with it. <laughs> Dr. Jonathan Santiotri, your, your concluding remarks. What, what sh do you expect the speaker on one side and then also uh, the NDC on the other side to do in responding to this judgment by the Supreme Court? Well, um, I don't foresee any kind of smooth relations going forward that will take place between the NDC and the MPP. I don't foresee that happening anytime soon. Probably when we enter 2025, when elections are done, and then you see the difference. Other than that, I don't see how they're going to cooperate. Apart from that, you know, the MPP has a lot of business to conduct in Parliament. I don't know how they'll be able to do so without the help or assistance of the NDC. Uh, especially when you are virtually using the Supreme Court to arm twist your colleagues. That is very challenging and a problem for the MPP to deal with. I was also asking myself, why would they even add this 350 or so million dollar tax waiver? For me, that is very, it is immoral because that cost will be borne by the succeeding government. And if you believe that you are going to win the elections, why in, why are you supposed to be, you know, in that position or disposition to pass such, you know, a, a tax waivers? Apart from that, um, I I had uh, someone in the studio suggest that, you know, uh, when somebody dies, there is that automaticity. And uh, but who 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 will you be expecting to communicate that somebody is dead? so that the seat becomes vacant. I don't think that a high court can wake up and go to parliament and tell them that I've <coughs> that somebody has died. And therefore, make sure you declare that the seat is vacant. Or somebody should come to me and, and write whatever so that I will say that the seat is vacant. It will have to take the speaker to communicate that. That is virtually what he did by communicating. So I still said that I'm still waiting. I don't see the compromises taking place. But if they will call, I'm suspecting that the NDC would still go and sit at the right side of the speaker. They will still go and sit at the right side of the speaker because they want to tell the Supreme Court that there is no law 
it is just by convention and parliamentary practice that majority ought to be at the right side of the speaker, minority at the left side. But if they are also suggesting that they have 137, as the MPP has 137, it took a compromise <coughs> for them to go to the left. So once they also believe that they have 137, you have 137. Therefore, there is no absolute majority in parliament. Then obviously, they will go back and sit there. That's the more reason why you need some kind of level-headed negotiation behind the scenes. Let us all eat humble pie and ensure that Ghana wins. Okay. Let me just read a couple of messages, though. I have this one coming from uh, Chairman Prosper. Uh, he says, <laughs> Chairman Prosper, this one, we're not discussing that. Anyway, I'll still ask. He says, please ask uh, Loi Shark that there's a, a story that says that Saudi King is supposed to build Medical University 42 SHSs in Northern Region. 2019 August. You know about the story, this one? No, I have no idea. But what I know is, is that Dr. Baumia is referring to Baumia, mm. in fact, he has done a lot for the Muslim community. Okay. Mosque, that, Kumasi Central Mosque. No, I mean that particular Tamale one about Saudi, 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 Saudi. What did you do? Uh, no, uh, I'm just saying, personally, Saudi. as a Muslim, okay. he has I'm reading, a huge I'm, responsibility. I'm, I'm reading comments. The Muslim I'm reading community. comments. Okay. Re re relax on this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But you don't know about that story. Uh, no, no. He knows about it. <laughs> he knows about it. Oh, so you now read my mind. Ah, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What Master, Pla Master Planner Junior, <laughs> King Sampo says, ordinary the ordinary Ghanaian knows the capabilities of Afenio Makin and his unifying forces. And Brother Philemon can say all manner of things about him, whether KNUSC or Lagos as a president is better or not. I want him to understand that even a primary one student communicates better and meaningfully than what he's doing. That's Solomon, <laughs> no MPP MP campaigns for Alan secretly. Maybe they are rather deceiving Alan secret secretly. Oh, he, he wants me to mention him. <laughs> yes, go ahead. No, now that the ruling has come, you hear from them. Okay. So, uh, Prince Henry Kofodia says, uh, the only thing the Supreme Court can reverse is the current exchange rate. Can't reverse is the current ex exchange rate. The very day this same Supreme Court said, I can't use my best certificate as proof of citizenship. I lost trust in the Supreme Court. The future <laughs> is pregnant, you say. And then um, we have more comments. This one also is coming from Caesar. It says, uh, based on the Supreme Court's ruling, can the Speaker then reverse his earlier ruling, which made the MPP majority by allowing the Formina MP to do business with the MPP? I'm not too sure about that, but we'll see how that goes. And then... Um, um, I say Kwame Bonsu uh, in Tafo says, Roland, what the Supreme Court did was the right thing. Everybody knows that the rule of law is supreme, and the Supreme Court is enjoined by the Constitution to have its powers. So we should all let this slide and obey the Supreme Court. The continuous conversations keep increasing the negative perception for the Supreme Court. It is not the actions of the Supreme Court in itself. And then De Delali Agbenyega says, in fact, um, in fact, part of the forfeiture in their own constitution is then unconstitutional, Roland. Ask the MPP. Well, it's a, I guess they have to go to a conference and change it the next time around. Usually that's what is done. Um, Kwame Obing says, what the Supreme Court has done is the right thing, and we all need to accept it. The MPP has a right in its constitution to say what they did. If they change their mind today, there's nothing wrong with it. Law is supreme. A new law can always take precedence over an old law. And that is what law is about. We should be dynamic. Dr. Akofa Sekbefia says, I'm so Roland, but I'm sorry. <coughs> Does Mr. Isahaku... No, um... Mr. Ishak, um, I have to scream to be heard. No matter how low his voice is, the microphone makes his voice very loud and audible enough for us. Okay, okay, okay. You are talking, you mean he's speaking, that's how he talks. You know, okay. he's a very vociferous man. So, or no, be so. Yes, I'm passionate. Okay, he's, passionate he, he's a very passionate man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, be so. Yes. Uh, he's a very yes, passionate so. man. <laughs> He's a very passionate man. Okay, so let me read a couple more messages. And um, 
Uh, this one is coming from Adade. Eric Adade says, I thought after the birth certificate issue and the deputy speaker presiding and voting ruling, it will end there. But this ruling by the Supreme Court is catastrophic. Eric Ashaliboche. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then also we have many other uh, comments coming in as well. Please make sure uh, you keep saying that. Kalioman says, what the Supreme Court has done in their pronouncement cooperation will, will linger on for a long time. Let the Supreme Court come to Parliament and add up to the numbers to conduct business. I don't know how, is it possible that things could be done differently in Parliament? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> is it that the NDC that will not cooperate, will not mass up numbers? Is it oh, possible? We all know that the NDC is committed towards the betterment okay. of Ghana. So when they record Parliament, <laughs> NDC were there in our numbers. They didn't even have the numbers. They didn't come. So NDC would come. We care about Ghana. We care about Ghana, and we'll do everything to protect the integrity of Parliament. Mm. All right. Grabbing Chief Mante is asking: Can the MPP <laughs> say that all the members of the MPP follow Alan? are still members of the MPP based on the ruling no, we are, of the court We are butterfants. We are, are butterfants. Butter so butter they have become a stand-up comedian. Stand -up. <laughs> butterfant. Solomon is in stand-up comedy here. Yeah, the butterfant. Uh, Niyama says, yesterday was the darkest day in the history of this country. So Roland, per the ruling of the Apex Court, the MPs who are contesting as independent candidates are still members of their parties and can also campaign against their own party candidates. <laughs> in the various constituencies when they are away from parliament they are seeking to represent where the parties have candidates what is the logic in this all right so what would be your expectation i mean just a minute yes my expectation is when parliament will yes my expectation is the parliamentarian would need to put the interest of ghana first regardless mm. of party as i said the attempt by the speaker was a power grab from the high court and we are very lucky as a people that the constitution has made a provision for it uh, to use the MPP, uh, the NDC uh, word, reset. So it has been reset the way it was before they stole the power. So I expect everybody to obey okay. if we have to call ourselves a civilized country. So, but... I, I don't understand. You mean we, mm, we haven't been civilized all no, this No, if you refuse to obey court orders, you can call yourself a civilized country. Otherwise, would, would them... Would what move, are you saying, Mr. Would move up. I mean, if a court has made an order, a civil, as a civilized nation, we expect that order to be enforced for us to continue. If you refuse to obey the order, everybody refuses, we will we'll then be sending our, ourselves back to the state of nature, All right. where there's no law and order. Mm. Yes. Um, will Senajemai says, I agree with Dr. Ishak, and he has I'm really... Not a doctor yet. Okay, so he's not a doctor yet. <laughs> he has really espoused the values of a true MPP man and an intellectual. Thank you. A true lawyer. Okay, and then uh, Safia Moklu says, Article 97 is equivocally, equivocally clear on what ought to happen in the case of a sitting member switching from one party to the other or independent to join a political party. Is the current CJ and his collaborators telling us they are more insightful than the framers of the constitution? What? Not to show. They, they to show. the power. Tell him to come to our law classes. Oh, okay. He might uh, oh, change his well, mind. He says that you should come to his law classes so you may change your mind. And then, <laughs> uh, my last one before I go for a break, landlord, Borga D-Line says, hmm, sad for Mother Ghana and our democracy with due respect. The danger now is, one, the MPP, two, the Supreme Court, three, the Electoral Commission. No one will come from outside Ghana and Hammer. Uh, all right. <laughs> Thank you very no, much, no, gentlemen. Just, I mean, just, a, just a quick one. You see, I need to correct something that my brother from the MPP said. He said that <laughs> Alaj Baumia had done so much for the Muslim community and had yeah. built Kumasi Central Mosque. That is a fallacy. That's not true. The funding for the Kumasi Central Mosque, and I'm sitting on authority, yeah. was secured by Alaj Isinari. Alaj Isinari, Ghana's ambassador to Saudi Arabia, secured the funding for the construction of the Kumasi uh, Central Mosque. So don't make that mistake anywhere. And I must say, the attempt by this MPP to weaponize religion, they should be careful about that. They are trying to say Muslims vote for Alaji Bahame because he's a Muslim. That's a very dangerous precedent to do. Should we also say Christians should vote for John Mahama because no, he's a no, Christian? No, don't pedal should that. Should we yeah. say that? We Look, should not. 
So weaponization of religion by the yeah. MPP is something no, they should no, disregard. No. They the, should abandon. The Rani Vegetable said, no, but this is very important. You want to mislead that. Yes. The point is that neglect that. Yeah. Let us vote for people based on their credibility. Because yeah. if you want to even measure the man you're talking about <clears throat> by the tenets of Islam, he has lied. He told the people of our part of the country that he had built the polygon dam. That was a lie. He told the people of our part of the country that he was building a Only medical a university. Old. He lied. He failed us. So this is a man that has demonstrated that we cannot trust well, him. Well, well, well. Vote for credibility, vote for John Mahama. I only gave you one. one. <laughs> so the, the question confronting millions of Ghanaians is how, uh, how would they get jobs to do and also live a decent life? And of the 13 candidates that are contesting, the one that has given you a plan as to how you will come out of this problem, Mr. Alan Chemante, he has given us a comprehensive plan capable of resolving all our issues and also uniting this country. This country needs a unifier. And I dare say that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia does okay. not qualify to be in that position. Neither is John Muhammad. The only one that is qualified is Alan John Kojo Chemate. And let me say that for you to honor Muslims is to make sure that hard face are so low, hard face, where they go for All pilgrimage. Right. As we speak, it's getting to so, 100,000, 1 billion. Alaji Baumia wants to deny all Muslims from going further no, to... No, uh, no, no, we're not going to, there. To not what there. is this? Star How can Nine you do that, Alaji Baumia? Do you know, do you know cash out? <laughs> yes, the last time I tried... He needs cash out. <laughs> yeah. I need so, cash so out. So over the last four weeks, <laughs> with Star 439 hash, yeah. we've been uh, giving out 50,000 yeah. Ghana cities yeah. to winners across board. You should try You should try I'll the try mega jackpot. The economy, if it is not uh, uh, the ghetto and the cash out, I will be surprised. Mr. Patrick <laughs> Gojo, um, <laughs> formerly of the National Sports Authority, I wish you all the best for the day as well. I'm waiting for your birthday on Friday. <laughs> wish you all the best. But also step into the world of Day One 539 for your chance to win big with Day One Direct and Day One Chop Money. Now with Day One Direct, all you need to do is to make sure you down star 446 hash. You pick the range of the numbers 1 to 39. You also get to win big. And the winning terms are 20 times the stake, 40 times and 400 times. And then you get to win cash every evening at 7 p.m. And also on Sundays at 6 p.m. Early birds also love day watch up money. And I tell you, at 10 a.m. we have the draws where you also need to use the same short code staff of our six hash. You choose the range of the numbers. Again, 1 to 39. You win 20 times, 40 times, 400 times your stake. And then you get to be all the better for it. You can play online as well, dewa-nle.com, or again, you use the short code and get the latest update. You can check them out across social media as well. But look, uh, thank you very much for coming as well. Dr. Jonathan Santiotri, thank you also for joining us from Cape Coast. We're grateful so much. But you can also follow us, 3news.gh, on Instagram, across social media as well and get the latest updates on 3news.com and all that you need from across the news space. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll bring you the latest in sports. Later on also, we're going to bring you Community Manifesto Saturday.